from the sidelines on 1580 KGAL. <laughs> about 13 seconds worth of news, and we're back here at the station. And by the way, uh, if anybody is listening back at the uh, the mothership <laughs> from ESPN, makes us sound more official. There is a lot of uh, static on the line this morning, uh, an incredible amount of static here. If somehow we can straighten that out. Back at the radio station, well, a good Friday morning to you. Whistle, please. Welcome to a final day of summer. How sad that is. When I am president next year, and I think I will be because I am the people's candidate, I'm going to take days out of January and February, which we all hate. We despise those months. And the only thing in those months we're waiting for is for them to be done. Well, who says there has to be 30 days, has September, April, June, and November, 54 with February, and every three or five years they add six. So f what was January? How many days were there in January? 31. 31, okay. Why do there have to be 31 days in January? Take six days out of January. You have 28 in February, except every six years adds like three. Take five days out of February, out of, uh, February and January. You've got ten days. What do you do with them? Put them in summer. Put them in August five days. I'm not going to wait for you. Come on. You're not, you're not up to speed with these things that should be done. I'm trying to fire up some answers here, but you're, you're talking so fast. Five days extra in July, five days in August. So what would today? Would it be the last day of summer? Think quickly. Okay, but, well, no, it wouldn't. No, there'd still be ten more days. Sure. Yes. Uh, okay. But what about the rest of the world? I mean, do we care? that? I mean, this is, this is winter in <laughs> Australia. We're the United States of America. We do what we want. <laughs> we do what we take charge. And when I'm president, I do what I want. Well, good morning, everybody. Final day of summer. In fact, uh, this week, the National Hockey League canceled its entire September preseason game schedule. The first on-ice casualty of the four-day lockout of the Players Association. But they wanted to start. They would have started practicing. They would have started uh, their preseason in about a week. There's something wrong with that. You know... When I'm president a year from now, hockey begins in February. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to From the Sidelines Day. A few things that do pertain to sports settled already this morning. I am your host, the next president of the United States, Radio Ray. President, what do they call me? Radio, or they call me Ray? <laughs> what, will, what will they refer to me? Over there is the man that everyone wants to see as president of the United States. <laughs> But he does not have the wow. courage, as I, to run for the office. And his possible running mate. And uh, over there <laughs> <laughs> is... Uh, why the, would you want an Allen ticket? I like that. Yeah. Rob Allen is over there with, holy smoke, the brightest shirt I have ever seen for OSU. That's you, right. You know who you are. You know how you look. You, yes. You look good there with that Thank shirt. Thank you. There, Thank Rob you, sir. Allen, who... Uh, will not be a part of the program because the first thing he said was that he was going to be Wally's running mate. You had a chance to say you were my running mate. Why? No, no, that's what I, that's what I meant. Why I did meant, you say that? I meant the possi possibility of Wally being your running mate. Oh, oh I You have lots of choices, I but thought, I would think he would be at the first of your list. They, oh. They'd have to double security around <laughs> Radio Ray. I, th <laughs> the, uh, I thought you said that you, you when you said your running mate, I thought you were going to be oh. Wally's. And your, no, that's kind of how oh, I'm no. Well, you're back on the program. Thank you. By the way, I just I realized I'd forgotten already, but let me do this. <laughs> you grooming yourself? Oh, you bet. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, there's a camera here in the studio today, and uh, I don't know why. <laughs> this is. Have we forgotten? What is this? Radio or TV? It is radio. It's but, radio. But why? I'm, I'm liking the video idea. Now. I am not. There is a there's a video camera here. Can you watch this live then? No. Well, why on earth would anybody <laughs> want to watch this thing once it's over? Oh. Dave Adams. <laughs> the the number of hits would be tremendous, knowing that they could see you on video. You can millions. You can millions. See. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Hmm? You want to run for office? You got to be visible. Uh, well, I, it's it's distracting to have that camera. There is a camera this, over there. This will allow proof, though, that you do not have a face for radio. You've, you've, you're, you're a handsome <laughs> man. You're not 6'4", 240, and they're really? going to know that now. You really but, think so? But, yeah, absolutely. You could be you're, my vice president candidate. You're, you're, <laughs> just never, I'm not going to have you alone with me in the office. But I just want to be back in your will. <laughs> a picture's well, worth a thousand words. Yes, We're on TV today, so... <laughs> 
Let me stand up. <laughs> hey, how you doing, everybody? You want me to stand next Good to you? Good to see you. Seems like old times having you to walk with. Arthur Godfrey used to be on TV the same time he was on radio. You didn't know that. I didn't know that. Right, I know that. I'm going to sit down again. Well, okay. We are on TV. That's crazy. <laughs> Craziness. Well, all right. What we do here on Fridays is we talk uh, sports. I want to talk about something last night that really upset me. Red Sox leading 4-1 to one in the ninth inning. They led 4 to nothing when uh, Clay Buckholz outpitched David Price, who is still a Cy Young candidate. Clay Buckholz outpitches him in seven innings, leads 4 to nothing, leads, leaves the game. I forget who the Red Sox put in the eighth, but he, got, he gave up a run. It's 4 to 1. They go to the ninth. They put in Andrew Bailey. He was to be the successor to Jonathan Papelbon until Papelbon left for mm-hmm. Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Mar- Andrew, Andrew was hurt through much of the year until he finally came back and is now pitching. So he is their closer last night. He pitched a third of an inning, gave up five runs, five hits, walked a batter, and left with two men on base and the game tied at four. They brought in Vincente Padilla, or Vincente Padilla, depending on how you want to pronounce his name. He faces one batter, gets no outs, and gives up a three-run home run. They give up six runs in the ninth inning and lose to Tampa Bay, seven to uh, seven to four. Now Tampa Bay, they beat Tampa Bay the first two games of the series. You've got that extra wild card thing going on, right? So they really hurt Tampa Bay. But if Tampa Bay wanted to gain a little momentum going into what will be their final twelve games. Who better than the Red Sox, who lose 13-3 to on, on Wednesday night? And we had a, the Eleven Chamber of Commerce visited our station yesterday. So I was there last night. But if I'd have been home, I'd have been watching that ninth inning. That would have been it. That would have been a divorce from the Red Sox. <laughs> really? I think so. But that game, if they're going to have any momentum, they're still like five and a half back of the Angels for the second wild card position. Uh, if they were going to gather momentum... Who better to get it against than the Red Sox in a walk-off home run last night? That's what a disgusting baseball season this has been. Now, is this year you have the possibility of two wild cards. Now more than ever, they should be in the playoffs, and they're not. So let me ask you, this whole two-team wild card thing, do you like it or do you not? First, let's start with the gentleman you all love. Let's take a good look at him on the screen. Holy cow! <laughs> He should be the host of this program. <laughs> I hear what you're saying at home, and I disagree with you. Oh, yeah. If I had brains, I'd be the total package. <laughs> do you like... Do you? Let me smile over here while I ask the question. Hey. How you doing, everybody? Do you like the two-team playoff system, the two-wild-card system? Now it's over to Wally, but don't be gone too long. I'll be back on screen in a moment. You, you're shooting that question to me now? Yes. Is that... Uh, you know, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. There are enough teams that, you know, when you, when you talk about adding, adding that, I think it probably adds some balance to what's going on. But I, I don't know. The, the, se- the season's so long anyway, it just seems like, like adding that team lends even maybe a little bit more credibility to the playoffs. I, I, I am fine with them having the second team in there. Why would that add more credibility? The longer the season, the more someone has established themselves as the best team. Now all you do is jeopardize that by throwing in some idiot team that barely had a good season but managed to get into the playoffs and has a couple of good weeks. Well, it, idiot or not, I mean, you're talking about maybe somebody that peaked late, you know, like, like the Mariners did this year where they had a great second half of the season. But they only peaked late because they've got nothing to lose. They're not playing for anything. Now they're back to the... That, that's not true in like old <laughs> times. Oh, the camera's not on me. What's wrong? See? Now they're back to the same way again. They've got Justin Smoke is hitting under 200 for crying out loud. The whole lineup is just anemic. So they started to win some games because there was no pressure and they were getting good pitching and they got some walk-off hits without the pressure. Hey, I'm going to go to the plate and hit a home run. Doesn't matter. But most most teams that are in that position when they get to near the all-star break start divesting themselves of players. And the teams that hang in there with the group they have or or make some moves to better themselves and have a good second half of the season. I want to see them have a run at it. You don't want to you don't want to have teams in there that have just barely been hanging on, you know, had a great first third of the season and then are are just trying to hang on. You want to see the teams that are playing the best baseball over the course of a season. 
over the course of the season. Now, you just changed your your reasoning. You said you wanted to see the teams that are playing the best baseball. That's different from over the course of the season. What you have over the course of the season are the teams that had the better record with 162 games, not the last 15. Rob, how yeah. do you like the extra wild card? Not that we're done with you. That's fine. <laughs> you better come <laughs> we'll back get, We'll get back to him. <laughs> Rob? I have mixed feelings about it. Yeah? I, I think on one hand, it, you know, like Wally said, it's a long season. It's the longest of the major sports, seven months out of the whole year that you play. And the two teams that are the wild card, if, you have, if there's any teams out there, if you have one shot to get back in the playoffs, to have a shot at glory, then, I mean, those two teams, now the teams above them, they could care less. They're in the playoffs. They're already in. But it's a, such a long season. For it to come down to just one game, that's where I have the mixed feelings. Just one game, one shot. That wild card playoff. That wild card playoff, okay. and hopefully your ro- rotation is such that you can throw your best pitcher at that at that point in time. In doing so, they somewhat uh, made it better for the team that does win the league, because if you have to throw your best pitcher in one day mm-hmm. in that one game playoff, then when you go against the first place club that you will face inevitably, invariably in the playoffs, then you may not have your best pitcher to start the first game, the fourth game, the seventh game, so that you can win a playoff series because you have one, one pitcher. Where over the course of the year, it didn't do you well because you'd win one game and lose three. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, in the playoffs for baseball is really has gotten weird with the scheduling of playoffs. Sometimes you have two games back-to-back, and then you have a day off, and then you have more games after that. So it all depends on when that... One playoff game is played, and when that first series begins. Well, it, it does. It seems all right to me that maybe you will have to waste your best pitcher mm-hmm. before you face the pennant winner, because the pennant winner should have some type of advantage. With just one wild card, there is no advantage, really. You're all the same when the playoffs start. Anybody can get hot. I, I think that it has added tremendous interest this year, because you look at uh, what we're talking about now, how many teams... Uh, are out of the second wild card position. And there are a number of them in baseball that you're still watching, and it, it adds to the interest for somebody such as I who has had a terrible season with the team that I love and everyone should. They're horrible, so there's no interest left. But there is interest for me this year because there's such an abundant number of teams that are left possibly making the playoffs. But still, we should never have gone to that system. And I will tell you why in just a moment. But let me smile at the camera first. How are we doing? Good to see you all. Love you, love you, love you. You know, I could uh, have a permanent show on TV if you just call call my agent, Mr. David Adams. He will get you in touch with me, and I can go for a reasonable price. Now, let's take a break, and we'll return, and we'll have that uh, startling announcement about why this is all wrong, even though you say it's right. You don't care, do you? I, you know, I, I'm I'm not ambivalent, but I'm I'm pretty close to it. All right, uh, the hottest belly ambivalent. <laughs> yeah, and I yeah. I said. That. I said the jury's still out for me. It's yeah. I, I, I gotta yeah. wait to see how it goes. It's the first but year I've ever valid, done it. Very valid point that that it has maintained interest for a lot more people over the course of this last half of the season. But there is something else that outweighs that interest that shouldn't be happening. Uh oh. <laughs> and I will tell you why in just a moment after we take this break from the sidelines at fifteen eighty KGL. Duck fans. We all know them. From the mild to the maniacal, they pop up everywhere. And they're always looking for ways to show their love for the UFO. Duck lips, duck hats, duck socks. And for the serious fans, a big yellow O painted right across their face. That's love. Now there's a new way for the truest of the true duck fans to show their UFO pride. Introducing the Duck Card Platinum Visa Card. It's the only credit card that combines low rates, cash back, and the chance to support the University of Oregon Alumni Association with every purchase. When you get yours, you'll see it's a green card with a big yellow O front and center. It's a totally ducked out Visa card, and it offers great fraud protection, online account access, all the bells and whistles you want in a Visa card. Apply for yours today at theduckcard.com. It's quick and easy. That's theduckcard.com. And hey, go Ducks. The Duck Card is offered by OCCU Card Services, LLC, a proud partner of the U of O Alumni Association. Get fit. Feel better. Look better. Get in shape and have fun doing it. Get started now and join the Albany Athletic Club. Since 1979, the Albany Athletic Club has offered a clean, friendly, safe environment where fitness is fun. 
play racquetball, lift weights, participate in cycling or yoga, or just relax in the sauna or whirlpool. Group fitness classes from low-impact dance to traditional circuit training. Your children will love the child care. Don't wait. Join today. The Albany Athletic Club, over the bridge in North Albany, next to Tom's Garden Center. 30, 20, touchdown, Seahawks! Browner with the pick, he goes 100 yards! Monday night football comes to town as the powerful Green Bay Packers invade CenturyLink Field. Hi, this is Steve Rabel. Join Warren Moon and me next Monday. Pre-game at 4.30, kick at 5.30, right here on the Seahawks Radio Network. The crunch of pads, the clash of helmets, the Seattle Seahawks are on News Talk 1580, KGAL. We're kicking off the season with the best deals of the year. It's the Built Ford Tough Truck event. Time to get the most for your money with Ford F-Series. Great power and amazing fuel economy means no compromises. And that's what you get in a truck built Ford Tough. Like Ford F-150. With a powerful and efficient EcoBoost engine, you get the power you want and the economy you need. Or Ford Super Duty with its amazing 6.7 liter power stroke turbo diesel. Super Duty's got everything you need to get the job done and then some. So if you're looking for power, payload, towing, and economy, your local Ford store has got the truck that's right for you. And with built Ford Tough Truck Event deals, there's never been a better time to buy. We're talking big-time savings on a huge selection of America's best-selling trucks. If you're ready for a great deal on a new Ford F-150 or looking to get to work at a new Ford Super Duty, this is your chance to save. So don't miss the built Ford Tough Truck Event going on now at your local Ford store. If it happens overnight, Eric and Gary have it live during Red Eye Radio on Smart Talk 1580 KGAL. With the strains, and it is straining with their music of the Baja Meshuggah Band, we welcome you back to From the Sidelines this Friday on locally owned and operated 1580 KGAL Radio. Proud to be local. I'm Radio Ray, that's Wally Ornaman, and over there, that's Rob Allen. Holy moly, turn to the camera a second. See if you people are watching uh, on the camera there. What, do you have to go to our website? Is that it? And then you find it on the... Can you see that uh, the, the shirt the that he's wearing, the sweatshirt? The OS, OSU is a good thing. But, uh, you know, there's too much of a good thing. <laughs> wow, that's good. You, you, you do look, you look good today. Good for you. You, you're dressed up. I didn't basic black. I didn't know we were going to be on uh, TV. I I'm, didn't either. I'm wearing my T-shirt here. I look like a hobo hosting this program. What is that? All right. The topic before we departed was the uh, the two team playoff system this year. It has added interest. I admit to, to that. That right now I look every day to see which teams are moving in. An interesting uh, thing about this, by the way, is Philadelphia in the National League. The Phillies. For so long, it's such a dominant team. And last year, they had Roy Halladay and Cliff Lee and uh, Cole Hamels and Roy Oswald. They picked up. They just had a fantastic pitching staff. They had Ryan Howard, uh, Pence, what's his name? Spencer Pence, Pence Spencer, uh, <laughs> Pez Dispenser. What was his name? Pez yeah. Dispenser. You got Pez it. Dis um, yeah, I think that's it. Pez Dispenser. They had... They had a terrific lineup, great pitching staff, and for several years, not necessarily all those players, but they had just the best in baseball, and they could win one World Series. Most of the time, they didn't make it to the World Series. If they did, they lost. Now, the team has somewhat come undone. I'm not sure if Roy Halladay is out injured. I don't see his name recently. Would either of you know I don't Roy Halladay is on the I don't DL? Know. Cliff Lee is still one game under 500 for the season. He's been, like he's been bad. Seven, eight. Oh, he hasn't been that bad. They just, they don't hit for him now. Huh. Ryan Howard was gone for a long time because on the last play of last season when they lost to the Cardinals in the playoffs, he injured his ankle. Last play. You know, how, how strange, how ironic is that? But Philadelphia's had a tough, tough season. This leads to the point here, which I am getting to. Let me find the, uh, you got a whistle or something, would you? I got a sports page here. Find out uh, where they are right now. Mm -hmm. You can't whistle. What is that? Get, get to see Radio Ray's file system. Smile into the camera. Just, all right. Which day is this? This is Tuesday, <laughs> September 18th. What's today? <laughs> Today's the 21st. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. As of Tuesday, Philadelphia was uh, 16 games out, and I believe I had today's paper here somewhere. They're 15 and a half games out behind the Washington Nationals. Now, with all their great teams, and they could only win one World Series, the irony is they're three games back of the second wild card position right now. 
This, because they are playing better, and you love that, they could possibly get into the playoffs. And wouldn't it be ironic if this were the year, because they're playing well in these last few weeks, that they were to go back to the series again and maybe win it? Sure. There's yeah. that opportunity. That would be ironic. Absolutely. If you're a Phillies fan, you got to love that. Even I find it interesting to watch them and see how they're doing. I noticed several weeks ago that they were starting to win, and I would watch every day. This is what's wrong with that. And I'll say it again. They're 15 and a half games out of first place. How could you possibly, at the end of October, say to me and rejoice that the Philadelphia Phillies are the champions of baseball when they finish 15 and a half games out of first place? They have no right to be in the playoffs. None. I'll, I'll tell you why. Because you want the best teams playing in, in the playoffs. Oh, and, please. And you, can, and you cannot. Uh, this gives the opportunity to reward them for for that and and not penalize them because of geography geography because, because they happen to play in in such and such division and the nationals have the best record in baseball they'd be behind they, cincinnati they'd be behind the giants if they were in the other leagues okay but not by as much you're uh, talking about 15 and a half no. games behind the national right, they'd be 10 games they, out sure okay what your your point being the point being that if you finish 10 games out of first place and i would that's a good you made a good point son of a gun what Turn the camera off for me. I'm going to curse. <laughs> oh, hold the press. How dare you make a good point while I'm talking? That's, that's on tape. That's on tape, Wally. <laughs> on the record. On the record. But it was supposed to be off camera. <laughs> you made a wonderful point. What was it? <laughs> you don't penalize, you forgot you don't penalize oh. the team because of geography. Okay, geography because they're in the National League East. That's right. I would have to check to see how many games behind Cincinnati. And unfortunately, I don't have... Uh, that Friday paper, which I folded up here among them. I had too many in the car, and I brought them all in at the same time. Let's see where they would be on Tuesday. Can you whistle? Mm, Philadelphia, Philadelphia, 74 and 74. Cincinnati, ooh, 88 games. Why hey, they 14 behind Cincinnati? Uh -huh. Ray, I have the information right here on my laptop computer here. They're 76 and 74, still 15 and a half behind. Turn the thing off. Turn the camera off a moment. How dare you make me look bad technologically <laughs> on this program? <laughs> I... Turn the camera back on. Yes. Oh, do you have that information? Yes, I that's, do. That's wonderful, then, that you could get that off your computer. And it's I not the be, first time, and it won't be the last. And I would be so backward as to uh, look in a newspaper. How far they would be 14 behind Cincinnati on Tuesday. Would that be right now? Philadelphia and Cincinnati, comparative records. Yes. 14. What about behind the Giants? About uh, 10? 15 and a half behind the Nationals. 14. Oh, you're talking about the wild card. Phillies, uh, Phillies and Giants. Just how far, if they oh, were Phillies in the same, same okay. division, how far back would the Phillies be behind the Giants? Yeah. We'll have this, <laughs> <laughs> this modern technology will give us the answer by the noon hour. I could get it out of the newspaper here in five seconds. You find it in the newspaper quicker than me, I will find it on the internet. Why would you call me backward? Because I would do it this way. San Francisco with 84 wins as of Tuesday, and San Francisco's been winning since then, so, so this would not so be... So 10 games. This would not be in the least a minute. There you go. Quick math. What, yeah. do you remember already that they won 74? Yeah. I had to look again. No, 76. Well, aren't you? 76. So, oh, seven, Philadelphia? Yeah. yeah. Philadelphia, 74. Oh, in, 74. In, in yours. But, 10 games. But, yeah. And I, th I think it would be a little more. I don't think San Francisco has lost since. Uh, it's nine. Lost it's game. nine games, right? Nine. Nine? Yes. How did he get to nine? Well, you're San looking Francisco. at Tuesday's paper, and he's looking it's at Friday. today's results. Turn the thing off. Turn the camera <laughs> off for just a minute. Do you realize, again, you're making me look bad on the air? Yes. I've been here for many years. I deserve some kind of respect with just my age. And my age is also making me slip a little bit. So be nice to me, will you? I'm sorry. Turn the thing back on. Oh, how far would Philadelphia be behind San Francisco? They are nine games behind. Nine games. So nine games behind San Francisco, 14 behind Cincinnati, 15 and a half behind Washington. And you mm -hmm. over here, get the camera on this one. I'm going to show yeah. uh, I rate. I'm going to show reasonable reason, good reason for being Hi, everybody. I'm going to get a little mad. I've got darn good reason. I'm a little concerned about the you. gestures you're making here. <laughs> There's no, that's not, it's, it's three fingers, it's just an Italian thing. I live with an Italian, it's, it's just, you have the gall to say that they belong in the playoffs and could win the World Series this year when the best they could do would be in the National League West, and this destroys your proposition of a few moments ago. The best they could do right now, geographically, is be nine games behind uh, San Francisco. Yeah, I, I, 
You know, you, you bring up a really good point. No, 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 no. It's, Shut it's down. Not, it's not a crash and burn. No? No, I, I, I do think that the benefits of having that second team, in, that second wild card team in there... Is the interest. Is, is yes. Yes, the interest that it, that it brings, I think, is a great point. I, I can't battle that. And, and it's a point you made. So, you know, I'm returning the compliment here. I can't battle it, but I'm, <laughs> I was saying when we came back, I'll give you a reason why they should not be. And this is the one that takes the priority. That there is no reason for a team that did that poorly to suddenly get in and even beat the team that is legitimately the wild card team. I like that idea. It, it's a problem you find in all major sports. When you look at basketball, you've got you've got teams uh, that are that are near 500, like you're talking about with the Phillies. So who cares that, about basketball that, season? You you and I both agree. It's only the playoffs. It's all we care about. That's right. Yes. Baseball is different. I do like the pennant races. And this, I think, uh, diminishes the importance and the interest in a pennant race. You're watching, ooh, how far down is that? The third place team is only a game and a half out of the, the wild card. You could solve this whole thing by going with my theory on how the playoffs should half be. Run. Okay. Half run, okay. Two halves of the season, yeah. just like the minor leagues do. That's You've got the, the champion of the first half, champion of the second half. You uh -huh. eliminate the wild cards, and you take those, take those and run yep. the playoffs. And plus, you have greater interest because it's only 81 games to the finish, the conclusion of a, a half season. That's right. Hey, and, you don't, and you don't have the, uh, the teams with these fire sales getting rid of players, and, and you don't have the movement of the, of the players like that over I the like course that. of the season. I like that, yes. But to add to that, you, you could shorten the season and have more teams in the playoffs. Mm. No. No. Oh, no. Seinfeld. Oh. Yeah. Wait, are you recording? Yes, okay. <laughs> record this. I'm sorry, that record was a horrible this. point. Seinfeld moment. <laughs> sorry for speaking. Oh. Sorry for speaking. I'll go back to my That's laptop. Right. <laughs> we need to take a break. I'm like items today. The Beavers, how stupid is this? The Beavers were doing so well. Do you know they're the only 1-0 and team in the country? There's not even a team that is 0-1 in the country. You're it. Go ahead. Flash your chest there to the camera over there. <laughs> Flash them. <Go> oh, <laughs> They're the only team in the country, and how stupid do you have to be then to jeopardize that by going down to Los Angeles mm, tomorrow? Yeah. But they will. And the Reverend Mr. Orange and Black will be by. Wally Orderman, bless him, despite the number of mistakes he's made this morning. <laughs> Rob Allen is the we'll same. the last time. <laughs> the same for him. <laughs> they will return, and we will all return from the sidelines in a moment. Duck fans, we all know them. From the mild to the maniacal, they pop up everywhere. And they're always looking for ways to show their love for the UFO. Duck lips, duck hats, duck socks. And for the serious fans, a big yellow O painted right across their face. That's love. Now there's a new way for the truest of the true duck fans to show their UFO pride. Introducing the Duck Card Platinum Visa Card. It's the only credit card that combines low rates, cash back, and the chance to support the University of Oregon Alumni Association with every purchase. When you get yours, you'll see it's a green card with a big yellow O front and center. It's a totally ducked out Visa card, and it offers great fraud protection, online account access, all the bells and whistles you want in a Visa card. Apply for yours today at theduckcard.com. It's quick and easy. That's theduckcard.com. And hey, go Ducks. The Duck Card is offered by OCCU Card Services, LLC, a proud partner of the U of O Alumni Association. Home improvement will never be the same once you've heard the Money Pit. Saturday mornings on Smart Talk 1580. Oh, that's the short break. <laughs> that's the one that goes very fast. Welcome back from the sidelines here at 1580 KGAL. We do this on every Friday morning, believe it or not, for those tuning in the first time. <laughs> yes, every single Friday with Wally Ornum and Rob Allen. And the Reverend Mr. Orange and Black, who is here at the Beavers in UCLA tomorrow. I know, Wally, a couple of weeks ago, you said you didn't think the Beavers could win any more than three games in the season. Yeah. Last week, you apologized for that. I did. And we were kind of getting late in the program, and I was going to say to you at that point, and I thought afterwards, there really was no need to apologize yet, because that still could be the case. They beat Wisconsin. That's a surprise. That gives them, even on your chart, maybe a chance to win four then. Right. But they're still in big trouble against UCLA, Arizona, back-to-back -back here, the Ducks at the end of the year. They do face Colorado. That you know could be a victory. I'm sure that's one you already gave them. Right. There is still a chance that it could work out exactly the way you think. Yeah, that's right. And my, ap my apologies were for uh, saying how badly I thought Wisconsin would beat the Beavers. And, and my prediction may hold true. I don't know. 
but I'm, I, I'm, I'm hopeful now for four. There and and you know what? People are people are riding high after that Wisconsin win, and and uh, yeah. you know I, I I think probably I'll put my predictions in my hip pocket and leave it alone for the rest of the season because they really did shock me, and I thought defensively I thought the Beavers were superior in that game. It's it's not what I expected. You look at three games for Wisconsin. They almost lost to Northern Iowa. They won by something like five points. I know they won last week, and I meant to check on this this morning, but they didn't win by much. They weren't. Oh, now he's going to go to the computer again. <laughs> <laughs> and did I hear? I got your back, did, Ray. Did I I've hear correctly that the that the uh, offensive line coach for Wisconsin was fired after the Beaver game? Yes, he was. He was fired the, the following week. Yes, <laughs> a couple of days later. That's unusual for the Beavers to play somebody and have them fired. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I told my wife during that game, as as it was coming to a to a close. That I I thought maybe with a loss to Oregon State, the head coach, his head may be on the block, and I you know that certainly could could be the case too. There's Wisconsin struggling. We have to become yeah. Wisconsin fans now. We have to hope they win some games. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> well, it certainly sure would give that. more credibility to the Beaver win. Let them worry. Oh well, this is true. That's absolutely true. But UCLA has been rolling, and uh, UCLA always rolls in the preseason. They and they always play somebody tough and and end up end up beating somebody good. They what was it Texas last year that I think they went went and, and beat. Was it last year? I know in Rick uh, Neuheisel's time they beat Texas. They beat uh, Houston. I thought that was a couple years ago. Yeah, could, him. could be. But uh, I am I'm a little worried about tomorrow. I think though we need to check in with the the Reverend Orange and Black, who has some uh, thoughts about UCLA as we have join our services. Please bow your heads and join the services of the Church of the Beaver Believer. You've come to the right place, made the right selection. The doors are locked. Nobody leaves till after collection. Amen. Church of Beaver Believer, O&B here. It is still hard to believe that here we are in the fourth week of the college football season, and the football Beavers are still the undefeated Beavers. Of course, tomorrow they make a big mistake and actually play. Those of you who are long-standing pigskin parishioners of the COBB know my long-time football philosophy for success. Don't play. Don't play. Of course, the Beavers did take a chance and played Wisconsin. Did they ever? Here with their report filed after that game, our COBB football analysts, Archie and Edith. Boy, the way the Beavers played. Last year had us all dismayed. But how about last Saturday? Now, now there, there was, was a game. game. Cause you knew what we did then. We beat those guys from Madison. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mr. We, we could, could use more games like the Badger, Badger bashing again. again. So last week we cut the cheese. Now let's do the same thing, please. Next week let us put away UCLA. UCLA. Thank you, a and &E. This year there is an unusually large number of new football faces roaming the Pac-12 sidelines, brazenly leading their teams against the Beavers. It seems only proper that we make note of the dearly departed who are now classified 4F, former followers of football folly. This week, we recall the beloved former Bruin, Rick Neuheisel. Before he came to UCLA, he'd had his share of controversy, some of it concerning recruiting violations. This led to his own reality series in which he starred as Ricky Recruto in I Live Loosely. Remember the theme? I live loosely and recruit that way. No constraints at all, that's my NC2A. The pursuit of life, liberty, happiness, that's for fools. All you need is liberty when it comes to rules. I live loosely, too much for some. Every job I get very soon is done. Every school, which at first is as nice as can be, winds up investigating me. Gee, I live loosely on recruiting trips. That's why schools lose their scholarships. Hey, I helped Colorado when they were down. Next thing you know, they're running me out of town. So then I headed to Washington. Played March Madness there just for fun. Barbara Hedges said in football, Ricky, you'll never be back. I said, hey, Barbara, listen up. If I were you, I wouldn't bet on that. 
He was right. He did come back with UCLA. But now he is gone again, leading to a new theme. I hate losing. I hate losing a big payday. But I've been fired by UCLA. Although they owe me some money, still not too bad. About a quarter of a mil. The Bruins decided to set me free. After our worst loss in conference history. 50 to nothing by USC. So now, what's history is me. You may have heard that in my day. I've had troubles along the way. So this last time I played it straight. As far as they know, won 21 games, lost 28. But it turns out by some strange quirk, now I'm on the Pac-12 network. So for now, my coaching days are done. You know, I always hated reporters, and now I are one. <laughs> Funny how life plays out, isn't it? Goodbye, Ricky. And starting tomorrow, may you always report on Bruin losses. We can hope that's the case. It just it scares me tomorrow. There's great reason to think that there is hope because of the way the Beavers played against Wisconsin. I mentioned, though, their bad first week against Northern Iowa, 26-21. They won, and I thought last week was another questionable one. It was 16-14, to 14, you said, checking? Yes. Utah State. That's not good. So uh, the victory over Wisconsin, although the Beavers beat them, uh, you know, was here in Corvallis, and uh, you really don't know anything until they take the field in the next couple of weeks. And there's still, the jury is still out. Your evil prophecy could still be true, Mr. Yeah, Orderman. It could be. But you hope that the, the we week, hope, a, week break... We hope not. Yes. Well, we hope that, that uh, the Beavs, with their rest and, and uh, having a couple of weeks to prepare for UCLA, go down and they don't lay an egg. We hope the, that uh, certainly highly successful. And we also know that generally your prophecies hold no weight anyway, hold no <laughs> water. the truth. So we have that going for us yeah. also. <laughs> if we get two no. weeks to prepare for every opponent, I think we could go uh, on your I field. like our chances. <laughs> I like our chances. I, he Except and I... the final game of the season. Yeah. I don't think it would matter. No. <laughs> The Reverend and I agree with that philosophy. It's what I've said for years. Don't play. Don't play. Only bad things can happen. Your misdirection play and don't play. That's right. Those are your two keys to winning. The fame misdirection play against the coach from Cottage Grove who called me up. I was coaching a baseball team from Junction City. He said, how do you get there? I said, go south. <laughs> so that's, that's the base. You don't even understand that you could use misdirection in baseball. I didn't. No, but it's true. But I have heard the story. I know, many times. No. <laughs> it's the only, the only good coaching story I have. We lost every single game in Cheshire. Parents, little kids, five years old. How did my son get on a team like that? <laughs> <laughs> coaching five-year-olds and they want to fire me. Wow. That's, uh, <laughs> that's sickening. All right, we'll take a break and we'll come back. We have a couple of breaks here. A couple an extra break has been thrown in the last two weeks because we're so successful. Let me smile. Hi, everybody. Hey, I'm available for parties. Uh, bar mitzvahs, whatever it may be. Give me a call at the station. Good to see you. The thing, that camera is so distracting, I can't forget it. It just it drives me crazy. A big star like you? If I, you I, know, I, can't, I can't believe you'd find that intimidating. You know why people at this program would get up and watch that thing later? If I got up right now and bashed the bejeebers out of it, <laughs> they'd go to see that. <laughs> That's awesome. So far, I won't. Let's take this break, and we'll be back with some sports stuff to talk about because it is from the sidelines. When you look out across Willamette Valley, you'll see plenty of banking choices. But we're here to give you an option that's pretty unique, like no other, in fact. Hi, I'm Dave Wood, President and CEO of Willamette Community Bank. We provide an alternative to large national and regional banks by offering customized financial services and local decision-making to benefit local people, local families, and local businesses. How many banks can say that? Lamb Community Bank, service like no other, we promise. Member FDIC. The Albany Rifle and Pistol Club Gun Show. This weekend at the Lynn County Fairgrounds. Over 400 tables of guns, knives, reloading supplies, and ammo. All tables must have 90% contact gun-related items, making this the purest gun show in Oregon. Take the entire family to the Albany Rifle and Pistol Club Gun Show. This weekend, September 22nd and 23rd, Saturday 9 to 5, Sunday 9 to 4. Admission is $5, good for both days. Kids 12 and under are free. Buy an NRA membership at the door and get in free. Don't miss the Albany Rifle and Pistol Club Gun Show. This weekend at the Lynn County Fairgrounds. Be there! 
It's time to get ready, Albany. If a natural disaster hits our area, we want you and your family to be prepared. Join us Saturday, September 29th for an event that will help you get ready. Northwest Natural will be joined by the American Red Cross, Albany Police and Fire Departments, Lynn County Medical Reserve Corps, and Community Emergency Response Team, Oregon Local Emergency Planning Communities, and Oregon Freeze Dry to give away safety items and a free lunch. The first 100 families will also receive a free Red Cross emergency kit. It's all taking place on Saturday, September 29th from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. at Eleanor Hackleman Park. Join Northwest Natural and your neighbors to get ready, Albany. Hi, this is Shelley Garrett. The Lebanon Chamber of Commerce is excited to bring you the first annual Antique Appraisal Clinic, Saturday, September 29th at Central Willamette Community Credit Union, 625 Fifth Street. Everyone has something they've always wondered what the value was, an old picture or a book, jewelry or furniture. We've invited Gary Germer, one of Portland's leading antique, fine art and personal property appraisers, to come to Lebanon and appraise your collectibles. Thanks to sponsor Central Willamette Insurance Agency and KSHO AM 920, we'll have refreshments and not only will the audience be entertained by Gary's appraisals, but the show will also be broadcast live on KSHO. Look around the house and bring the items you'd like appraised. The cost is only $5 for two items. This is Gary Germer. Please join me as we appraise Lebanon's treasures Saturday, September 29th. The Antique Appraisal Clinic, September 29th from 9 a.m. to noon at Central Willamette Community Credit Union, 625 North 5th, across from Pine. Pioneer School in Lebanon. Albany Grocery Outlet Bargain Market, across from the Heritage Mall, has bargain prices on the brands you trust. You'll find a mountain of a variety of your favorite premium beers made in Oregon and from all over the world now at incredibly low prices. Hurry, limited to stock on hand. Albany Grocery Outlet Bargain Market, 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Albany Grocery Outlet Bargain Market. Across from the Heritage Mall has bargain prices on the brands you trust. Science and common sense. Dr. Bill Wattenberg will surprise you Sunday nights live on Smart Talk 1580. Hi, well, welcome back from the sidelines. 1580 KGAL on the AM dial, the fine place on the AM dial. There is a football season going on in the Ducks in Arizona. That should be interesting. It is intriguing to me that these past few weeks, while the Ducks are slapping teams around like uh, Arkansas State, Fresno State, and Texas Tech, the Ten Duck Tennessee fans... Tennessee Tech. Tennis Tennessee Tech. Tennessee Tech. Tennessee Tech. Yes. Did it, what did I say? Texas. I said Texas? Yeah. It's a bit of a difference. I say Texas which, Tech. Which the PA announcer did at one point during the game last <laughs> oh, week. I said, I said <laughs> Texas Tech? Yes. Take that out of the program. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm... I do make mistakes occasionally, but that's the only one. Well, the Ducks had one-sided wins, but there were sloppy plays in those games. And they gave up uh, defensively. They did not play well in the first two games against Arkansas State and Fresno State in the second half. Exactly the opposite of the way they used to be in recent years. But that's also because the good offense came out. And, sure. You know, there's a lot of reasons. But it still leaves it open, even in the minds of the most ardent Duck fan, as to what will happen tomorrow against Arizona. Yeah, and and I was at that game last week. Oh, oh that's I, right. I, I yeah. was went down to watch Will Murphy in in his senior, probably the last time I get to see him play football, and and so I got to go down and watch, and and we saw him after the game and such. But I, uh, my sister in law actually brought up a point when we were at at halftime. We were talking. She says this just isn't the same team, and I said, you know, they aren't showing their hand. They're playing weaker teams right now. Mm-hmm. They aren't they aren't showing their hand as to what they can do, and it's it's absolutely what Chip Kelly needs to do. He needs to. Keep things very generic in what he's doing, and and the only thing I noticed about that team is they seem a little bit less disciplined. There there are uh, they had a couple of personal foul penalties, you know, a couple of a couple of hitting somebody too late out of bounds, some procedure penalties that you wouldn't expect from the Duck team, and those things I think once they get those kinds of things shored up, they're going to roll. They're they're really good. DeAnthony Thomas stopped, yeah. stopped short of the end zone last week. Somebody caught him, knocked the ball loose. Right. Duck still got the touchdown. Right, that I, was at our end too. Oh, I think he fumbled against Fresno State as well. He had some fumble problems last week, and he's on the cover of Sports Illustrated this next week. Right. Remember when Ken Simonton was on the cover of Sports Illustrated? Yes, I do. It was after the Beavers had won the Fiesta Bowl, and I think they may have they were either picked number one or two in the nation. Yes. And they wound up with a losing record. They went right. to Fresno State and laid an egg. Fresno State. Yes, that, that's right. Yes, I remember. I was listening to the Church of the Beaver Believer from uh, 2002. I think it is was the season 
that they had those problems <laughs> after the <laughs> we ought to play that someday after the Fresno State game. Yeah. But uh, you know, people can uh, people can coronate teams as the uh, as the king the king of the of the college football season and it quickly changes. USC and Stanford. That was stunning. Well not something. I got to see the second half of that game. That was crazy. Yeah, it was. And Stanford so, looked good. And and Stanford is motivated to prove that they weren't all about Andrew Luck. And and they showed something last week in that, that victory over SC. So it could be interesting tomorrow night, Arizona. Arizona, maybe uh, they beat Oklahoma State. That's no small thing either. Oh, this will be a tough thing for the Ducks. No question about it. They're, I, I just, I don't know, I have, I have good feelings about what the Ducks are going to do this year. Yeah, yeah, but that's because, you know, we take it for granted. There's just something about these analyses. You see something, oh, yes, they won last week, they'll win big. And then we're always shocked. All you have to do is look at USC, and you've got to remember that every week. Something is going to shock us. Maybe it's the Duck game. Maybe it's the Beavers going to Los Angeles. We'll see you tomorrow. By the way, the Duck game is here tomorrow at 6 o'clock pregame, 7.30 game time. I want to ask you about most valuable player. Are you... Uh, I'm, I am an ardent baseball fan. You know, there's a real discussion about the most valuable player in the American League, whether it's Miguel Cabrera, mm-hmm. who is just at only a couple of days ago, and I don't think it has changed, he was two home runs shy of being tied for the Triple Crown. He leads an average, should win, should win the RBI uh, race, but he's a couple home runs shy of Josh Hamilton. If he wins the Triple Crown, in, old, in the past, most Triple Crown winners would immediately be the most valuable player. Many people, though, say it'll be Mike Trout of the Los Angeles Angels, who is in his rookie season and having a fantastic season. I want to know, maybe you don't care at all. <laughs> if that's the case, when we come back, say so. But we'll take this break and return on KGL. Duck fans, we all know them. From the mild to the maniacal, they pop up everywhere. And they're always looking for ways to show their love for the UFO. Duck lips, duck hats, duck socks. And for the serious fans, a big yellow O painted right across their face. That's love. Now there's a new way for the truest of the true duck fans to show their U of O pride. Introducing the Duck Card Platinum Visa Card. It's the only credit card that combines low rates, cash back, and the chance to support the University of Oregon Alumni Association with every purchase. When you get yours, you'll see it's a green card with a big yellow O front and center. It's a totally ducked out Visa Card, and it offers great fraud protection, online account access, all the bells and whistles you want in a Visa Card. Apply for yours today at theduckcard.com. It's quick and easy. That's theduckcard.com. And hey, go Ducks. The Duck Card is offered by OCCU Card Services, LLC, a proud partner of the U of O Alumni Association. With over 900,000 products in 31 diverse product categories, Granger is basically an anything-you-need supply buffet. We've got everything from safety and electrical products to hardware, hand tools, and more. So you can efficiently purchase exactly what you need from one source, saving time and trouble. And just to be sure, the buffet thing was a metaphor. Please don't eat the stuff. Buy your supplies smarter. Just call, click Granger.com, or stop by a branch today. Granger for the ones who get it done. So does the rest of the economy. CSX trains are the most cost-efficient way to move goods to market. CSX, how tomorrow moves. 30, 20, touchdown! Seahawks! Browner with the pick! He goes 100 yards! Monday night football comes to town as the powerful Green Bay Packers invade CenturyLink Field. Hi, this is Steve Rabel. Join Warren Moon and me next Monday. Free game at 4.30, kick at 5.30, right here on the Seahawks Radio Network. The crunch of pads, the clash of helmets, the Seattle Seahawks are on News Talk 1580, KGAL. Albany Area Chamber of Commerce, helping your business grow. 
During these challenging times, buying local is more important than ever. Visit over 100 local businesses in one afternoon at the Albany Business Extravaganza. Wednesday, September 26th at the Lynn County Fair and Expo Center. Discover local businesses, their latest products and services. Make connections and sample free cuisine. The Albany Business Extravaganza is presented by the Albany Area Chamber of Commerce. Doors open at 1 p.m. The Morning Update, weekday mornings on News Talk 1580, KGAL. I already thought we were back a moment ago, so don't put that on the on the camera. So we've already ruined the Bahamas Shugna Band. They've already played. Welcome back to From the Sidelines, this fabulous program each Friday morning. How are you there on the camera again? You can see this whole thing. Uh, just, just, I don't even want to see it <laughs> on our on our website, kgeld.com. So how about the most valuable player? you have any feelings if Miguel Cabrera wins the Triple Crown, shouldn't he win the, the MVP? Mike Trout? they say is going to win it. Yeah, I don't know that I have strong feelings one way or the other over, over either one of them. What I do feel, though, is that too much emphasis is put on home runs. I, I don't think, I think if, obviously if he's within within two of the lead, he's had a great year in home runs anyway, but I think the RBIs on base percentage, the, you know, all the things, batting average, have a, should be, it should be weighted more that way when you're, when you're voting. Very difficult, too, to compare a slugger versus a pitcher. And uh, so I, I don't know I don't know who should win that, but I do think home runs should be less of a factor. Well, you'll be happy to know apparently what all these statistics are now. It's like the the Moneyball geek from the movie. They have m myriad of statistics now by which they measure a player's performance. And apparently, if you look at all of those statistics on base percentage, uh, defensive player stolen bases, total bases for the year outside of home runs, things of this sort. <laughs> Apparently, Mike Trout is far above Miguel Cabrera. <laughs> and it's interesting to me that this is what they're looking at. I haven't heard that before, where they go this deep into statistics, mm -hmm. and you say they should. That's, that's good. Again, that's one of those reasonable ornament things that I despise. <laughs> but they say that uh, Trout's statistics, and I wish we could go into that. I hear the music already are better than Miguel Cabrera's, but that's hard to believe. A triple crown winner. They also say the Tigers may not make the playoffs, and if they don't make the playoffs, Cabrera won't win. Well, the Angels probably are not going to make the playoffs either, so right. I don't know what, right. what difference that made with anybody. But uh, it's, it's interesting now, that whole money ball thing has gone far deeper. Every year there are new statistics. Unfortunately, the newspapers never really give them to you. you know, you've got to really research like you've got your computer over there. Wally Orderman, thank you. You and Woodburn uh, tonight with West Albany at 7 o'clock on K-Show. Rob, you join me tonight, 7 o'clock for Crescent Valley and Lebanon. That should be an interesting battle. Not that Woodburn, you know, West Albany should win no, tonight. No, that, that's, a, that's a very compelling match. Yeah. So join us on K-Gal tonight, 7 o'clock for that latter game. We'll see you next Friday from the sidelines. Locally owned and operated, this is the very independent News Talk 1580 KGAL, Lebanon, Albany, Corvallis.